Okay, the last five minutes of this episode of Happy Sugar Life is heartbreaking, terrifying, and it's an absolute mindfuck. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another review of Happy Sugar Life, the show that fills you with love and also plants a butcher knife directly into your neck. To say that this episode of Happy Sugar Life was brutal might be something of an understatement. This was certainly a roller coaster of emotions type of episode, and the way that it all ended was just so incredibly terrifying and surprisingly realistic and featured probably the most gruesome imagery that we've actually seen from the series thus far. This entire episode is actually divided up into a couple of different parts. The first half of the episode, we get a meeting between Tayo and Asahi, and Tayo is doing everything in his power in order to lead Asahi out of town by giving him an article of clothing that belonged to Shio that he claimed actually found in another place. But of course, Asahi is starting to realize that something's not quite right here. If this guy already had all of this information, why didn't he come to me immediately? And that's when he realizes that he's hiding something. And he immediately confronts him on this fact, which causes Tayo to completely flip out! A small fight ensues, and both of the characters end up running away from one another. Asahi is disappointed because he could have followed Tayo, and this could have led to more information about finding Shio, but basically, he's back to square one, which is putting up flyers and being perpetually depressed. That is until he is met by Shoko in what might be one of the most kindest and sweetest scenes of the entire series. The following scene is infectiously pleasant, but it also throws up tons of death flags for both of these characters. What I found most intriguing about this scene, however, is that Asahi mentions that the kid that he ran into has blonde hair, and he also has pins in his hair. Shoko immediately realizes that this has to be Tayo, but she doesn't tell him anything. I wonder why she withheld this information in the first place. She could even be doing it for selfish reasons. If Asahi ends up finding Shio, Asahi will no longer have time for Shoko. And it's very obvious at this moment that Shoko is falling in love with Asahi and wanting to be there for him and to console him. There's a great scene where she actually embraces him and says that she doesn't want him to go down this path of darkness anymore, that he needs to try and find some happiness for himself. For Asahi, the only happiness is being with his mother and with Shio. This is when Shoko just out of nowhere decides to kiss him and basically professes her love for Asahi. The reason this moment is so effective is because throughout most of the series, Shoko has come across as something of a shallow girl, only going for guys who are basically the jockish type. Here she's falling in love with someone who's considered troubled and weak and starts crying on the drop of a dime. She literally considers Asahi her very own prince. It's a really sweet moment, to be perfectly honest. But it also means that someone is about to die. The last 10 minutes or so might be some of the best material that I've actually seen from the entire series. It actually opens up with Sato returning home to Shio with all sorts of delicious sweets and celebrate the anniversary of killing this artist and taking his apartment. She doesn't really say that stuff out loud, but she did bring lots of delicious sweets and cakes for Shio. They end up deciding that they're going to have a fun day together, and that Shio even says that she's going to bake a cake for Sato. When Sato decides to leave, Shio suddenly decides to hug her right outside her apartment, and standing outside is none other than Shoko, who decides to take a picture. This was the moment where I was like, oh shit, Shoko is friggin' screwed. Honestly, I was horrified in this moment. I was like, oh man, there's no way Shoko's going to be getting out of this situation. And Sato ends up grabbing her, dragging her into her apartment, sending Shio to her room, and the rest of the episode, there's almost no dialogue. You get to see a tense confrontation between Shoko and Sato, where they're both in this dark room, and you're just waiting for that moment where Sato is going to try and kill her except that it never happens. What ends up happening is that apparently Shoko was desperately trying to appeal to Sato's sense of sanity by saying that she can bring her back to the light, that everything's going to be okay, and she leaves with confidence knowing that she's going to save her friend. Shoko's literally about to walk out of the apartment and it looks like we might actually get a happy ending for this character. Until suddenly, like friggin' Michael Myers, Sato comes up from behind her, grabs her, and kills her by stabbing her directly in the neck. 
The reason this scene is so horrifying is because it seemed like it almost wasn't going to happen, and it almost happened like a quick jump scare where Sato just appeared from out of nowhere. The other reason this scene is so terrifying is for how incredibly realistic it is. It's not like blood squirting all over the place or anything. It's cold and it's quiet. And I think the most terrifying thing about the entire scene is watching Shoko desperately try to scratch away Sato's hands from her head. You get to see all of the scratch marks all over her hand bleeding out as she slowly dies. This is a really sad and horrifying death for the series, and it's at this point that there's officially no going back for Sato. She's killed multiple people at this point, and it's only a matter of time before her crimes catch up with her. So what's the rundown on this episode of Happy Sugar Life? The last... Like, five minutes of this episode were exhausting. The death of Shoko was expected, but it was also shocking in the way that it was actually going down. I didn't expect that Sato was just going to drag her into her apartment and kill her where Shio was in the same exact building. With Shio just sort of going into her room and ignoring these events as if they've almost happened many times before. The scene of watching the two characters talk to each other with no dialogue was just so intense because you're just constantly trying to figure out what they're saying, what's going down, what Shoko is going to try and do to get out of this situation, and it almost seemed like it was going to work out, but that moment where she was killed, like I said, something about the imagery and the way that it was played out was just absolutely terrifying. It also makes me feel for her character so much considering how she's been developed over the last couple of episodes and the fact that she basically is starting a relationship with Asahi at this point. Asahi himself was also an interesting character in this episode. I said that he was one of the more level-headed characters of the series, but he still has a lot of these weird, crazy, and insane tendencies. When he sees that article of clothing from Shio at the beginning of the episode, the way that he stares at it with such intent is honestly pretty terrifying. It's not that he's, like, obsessed with Shio in the sense that the other characters are. He's just obsessed with actually finding her to the point where it does make him seem a little crazy. And that line goes again with that scene in the middle of the episode where it seems like Asahi is going down that very dark rabbit hole, only for Shoko to bring him back to the light. It's something that her character has been very good at, and unfortunately she can't do it for her best friend. Sato doesn't even consider her anything special. She's just a normal nobody like everyone else else, which makes all of the previous scenarios between these two characters and moments seem all the more hollow, because Sato never cared about her at all. She doesn't even view all of the other people around her as people or humans or anything that she could consider something that she could love. But yeah, this episode just absolutely worked in every way in terms of the drama and the terror, especially in those last couple of minutes of the episode. I was visibly shrieking while watching this scene. Like It, it was just such an intense moment. And uh, like I said, we're getting this much closer to the end of the series. And uh, it, again, just watching that little fuse slowly work its way down to that stick of dynamite. This show is going to explode soon. So this was another fantastic episode of Happy Sugar Life, which was shocking and terrifying and very sad, especially for the end with Shoko. I thought she was going to be killed, I just didn't expect that it was going to be like this and in such a blunt manner. Uh, but yeah, that's Happy Sugar Life for you. This episode right here is a 5 out of 5 in my opinion. Another fantastic and super atmospheric episode for the series, which played with our emotions and our hearts and completely creeped us all out. You guys definitely need to check out this episode. If any of you did watch it, I would love to get your thoughts about it. You can tell me all of them in the comments section below. Tell me about your thoughts on Shoko's death. What did it go out the way that you were planning? How do you think the series is going to come to an end? Let's get a discussion going about this crazy episode of Happy Sugar Life. I'll see you guys next time. And as always, stay down now, baby.